everyone, this is Scott Spatz, Agent Mastermind. So excited to have you guys here. Honored to be here with you guys. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, one, I want to make sure that you can see my screen. Two, I want to make sure you can hear me okay. And I do want to say that if you're, uh, if you're joining us for the first time, it might be better to call in. There's a little audio button on your panel there. And if you click the drop-down arrow, it'll actually give you telephone options, a dial number, and, a, and an access code. That'll put you in. It just seems to be a better... Uh, it seems to l allow you to hear it a little better, and then there's less interruption or less breakup. Also, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, feel free to go to our Agent Mastermind private Facebook page. We're approaching 10,000. It's agentmastermind.com forward slash groups forward slash Agent Mastermind. And a lot of collaboration going on in there. Just to really appreciate you guys collaborating and asking questions and helping out with everybody that we can. So really, really, really good group. A lot of activity. So. Today I have a special guest and a special surprise for you guys today, and that is my good friend Aaron, is it Redfern? Redfern, yeah. Redfern, out of Colorado, and here's the, uh, sorry to say that we're going to be snowing in Colorado in a month, he said, so he actually said that, it's kind of funny, they have to plan their Halloween around what the, uh, the actually the what the weather kind of thing is what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, you always plan your Halloween costume around your kid's coat. <laughs> Um, just the way it is. <laughs> crazy man, crazy, crazy, crazy. So, what Aaron has done, which, dude, I can't thank you enough for doing this. And uh, you know, huge thanks to Glenn Marino. We started this in January. We started the flower pot strategy, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But Glenn, or um, excuse me, uh, Aaron has uh, has been able to get this CE approved in Colorado. So, for you agents that are on the call, you're going to be able to take advantage of the CE education with this. Flower pot strategy, and man, I, I tell you, if, if you had to go to one class, this would be the class I would go to. This is where the success is happening. Um, it's an amazing strategy to implement and incorporate into your business. So, Aaron, I'm going to kind of step back. I'm going to do this with you, but I'm going to let you go over this class as you teach it. The C I wish, I really wish someday that we could get these webinars CE approved. So, if there's anybody on this call that has that power, I would love to have a conversation with you because we uh, we're, we're attempting to get these these classes approved. Um, in different states, where um, I'm doing it in Michigan, he's got it in Colorado. We're going in Illinois to do it. So we're uh, Texas has actually been submitted, so we'll have it there soon. So if you're in one of those states, you're going to be able to get the CE approved. So Aaron, what do you got for us, man? Yeah, first of all, it's great to be on the phone call. Thanks everybody for taking time out of your your busy morning here after Labor Day to, to hang out with us. So this strategy, by far and away, for me is is my most favorite strategy, and it's really what propelled me to to get it CE certified. Um, you know, the um, little bit about me, first off, is uh, I've been a senior loan officer at Supreme Lending here in Denver for my 13th year in, in the business. Um, I, Based on my 2013 survey results, 100% of, of our realtor partners recommend my company and, and hopefully you to your peers, and 99% of our consumers give us a positive review. And I use today's technology to help agents win every listing presentation and help their listing sell sell faster. And by using results in advanced marketing, you too can double, if not triple, the amount of business that you're doing right now. And we're gonna we're gonna cover that more in depth. Um, you know, the the whole flower pot strategy is really in a technical term, results in advanced marketing. And we'll kind of break all that down so it, it doesn't sound so complicated. Uh, on a personal note, I've been married to my wife, Carla, for 11 years, which by far and away was my best sale job ever. And, <laughs> awesome. And I got, uh, I got two kiddos. They're both boys. They're going to be uh, – they're seven and eight right now. They're going to be eight and nine here in October. And my oldest is very focused. He swears he's going to be a professional football player someday. And he nice. even, got, even has it narrowed down to the team. He, he says he's going to play for the New Orleans Saints. There you go. Uh, Love it. Love it. Yeah, no, no idea how he got there since uh, I'm, I was born in St. Louis and live here in Denver. Never even, I didn't even step foot in Louisiana, but that's his team. That's cool. So you know what, I have to, um, just to, uh, just to kind of go for what you just said, the results in advance, guys. Like if you're multitasking on this, what we're going to do, just to kind of re-clarify, we're going to go over this strategy this week. We're going to give you detailed, concrete success stories. We're going to give you a bunch of different examples from people that have been doing this since January. And also, um, uh, just a tried and true strategy that absolutely positively works. It, even if it's just going to a listing presentation today, tomorrow, 
uh, marketing to expireds, marketing to FISBOs, and also uh, the, the whole mind, the mindset is really what I want people to understand today. The mindset behind giving something of value, the law of reciprocity, giving something of value, and then in return getting something back. It's just we as a human creature, um, we, we, we tend to want to give back to those that give to us, and that's what this mindset is all about. So that's what he's going to be covering, and we'll show you some examples. Next week, we're going to be covering the, exactly how to set this up, I mean, literally step by step with my partner, Vicki Rice, and uh, we're going to give you a really simple solution to do it within a minute and a half to three minutes tops, have this thing ready to go. So I'm excited to show you. So don't miss this one. Um, close your doors, turn off your phones, turn off everything so you don't miss the mindset of this and the whole thing, but also don't miss next week as well, okay? Sorry, man. Absolutely. Yeah, and just uh, we're just going to set the table a little bit here quickly on, on mindset here on on why we want to do this. So we're, we're going to talk about lead generation. We're going to talk about cold calling versus in-person visits. Um, we're going to talk about the essentials of having a daily success plan uh, in, in all of our businesses, as well as that law of reciprocity, results in advanced marketing and how that plays into that. We're going to talk about some prospecting tips, give you some FISBO scripts that absolutely work. Uh, if we have time, we'll cover some seller objections, and in the end, we're going to give you 10 things that you should, as soon as you open your door and flip back on your phone, um, 10 things that you should do right away. So the, the essentials of, of selling. Um, first of all, people do business with people that they bond, like, and trust. So I think one of the, the biggest challenges in, in any business is to make sure that you eyeball your leads, meaning you, know, you get that person-to-person -person visit, shaking their hand, introducing you as a person, and not a postcard or voice. I mean, there, there's tons of studies out there that obviously show that as soon as you sit down with somebody and they meet you, your odds of becoming a friend and converting that lead go way, way up. Um, way up, way up, 10 no times higher, absolutely. So, so any strategy that you have needs to be geared around getting in front of somebody and eyeballing them, if you will, uh, belly to belly every day. So in order to do that, you really got to have a game plan. Um, and the most successful groups that I collaborate with and that, that I work with, without missing a beat, these folks have three in-person visits a day. And that's not some crazy math equation up there. The E is for expired, F is FISBO, and two is personal contact. So whether it's you know three expired, two expired, and a FISBO, three personal contacts, however you get there, um, out of those three groups, you need to meet eyeball to eyeball with three people a day. And then they to set up those appointments, they make 12 to 18 success calls a, a day. So they're reaching out to expired FISBOs, personal contacts, and they're making sure that they make those phone calls, blocking off time, and doing those money-making activities to, to make sure their business grows and increases. You know, what, you know what's crazy about those two things right there is three in person a day, 12 to 18 success calls. We say 13 hellos per day, and it, guys, I'm telling you, it, it's insanity, the, the, like the percentage of increase in your business when you do this, and it's on your calendar, and it's like you put your war paint on, and whatever time it is, you get your 13 hellos per day, whether it's half in the morning, half in the afternoon, this is where the success is right here. And then just throw in this mindset of something of value into it catapults it into a huge snowball. Might as well use snowball because we're talking Colorado, right? Absolutely, yeah. So get, getting into that mindset, right, ask yourself, what am I doing right now or what is my competition doing with expires or FISBOs? You know, are you sending out a postcard? Are you calling and, and leaving a voicemail message? Um, you know, ask yourself, do I want to be another postcard? Do I want to be just another voice message? You know, what, if, what do I want to do to, to make my business different? Um, and it's kind of like this. You know, if you've ever ever asked yourself, uh, which, which fish bowl am I fishing in or swimming in? You know, am I, am I in the left there with all the postcards and the voicemails? And, and what do I do to jump out of that fish bowl and get into one where I'm kind of swimming all by myself? And that would be a this unique truly it, man. if yep. you're able to do that. No question. For sure. And your 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 guide and your ability to get there is really your results in advance. And that's what we're that's what the whole idea behind all this is 
man, we're going to help you jump out of that, that fishbowl and start swimming by yourself. Now, people always say, well, should I, should I cold call my leads or should I make in-person visits? Real quickly, we'll take a, a look at, at both techniques. If you're going to cold call, you know, you got to block off four to six hours a week. You're going to call 60 to 90 leads. You're going to shut off your phone, your email, every, you know, not answer your cell. You're really going to focus on those four to six hours a week and call in your 60 to 90 leads. And our numbers show that 50 to 60 percent of expires and FISBOs are never going to answer the phone. So if you're calling on 60 prospects a week, 24 to 30 are going to answer their phone, which gives you 30 phone call conversations. And your whole goal is to convert 30 of those into five eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball appointments, right? And your only reason to call these folks is to get a face-to-face -face appointment. It's not to sell yourself over the phone as far as your marketing strategy and tell them how great you are as far as, you know, um, you'll do this, this, and this for their home. It's really more about making a friend, agreeing with what they say, if any selling, as far as what you'll get them to do, you always want to do in person. And I know that's, well, that's, a, that's a difficult thing sometimes for us salespeople is to realize that talking to people over the phone really is just trying to get in front of them. And then any selling that you do always needs to be face-to-face. -face. And then uh, once you're done with that, obviously you want to put everybody in your database and you want to follow up, follow up, follow up. Follow, yeah, yeah. You know what? You know it's kind of funny. We were talking about this the other day about follow up. It's like I've never had anybody complain to me, like Scott, dude, please stop calling me and following up with me and giving me updates and checking in. Please, you're just driving me nuts. You know what I mean? It's never yeah. that never happens. It's you always the I haven't heard from him in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Never. He called me, man. He got the listing, but I never heard from him again. So like it's just follow up. Follow up is the number one key to success in any business. Absolutely. Um, and then couple that, where if you look at the personal visit, how that differs from the cold call is you're going to use results in advanced marketing. Uh, you'll prepare your marketing pieces the day before. You're actually going to go to their home and ring the doorbell, and you got a 50-50 chance if they're going to be home or, or not. Now, my advice to, to my partners and what I've seen be the most successful is if you go out sometime after about 3.30, 4 o'clock, uh, because the, the the working mothers that try to be home, uh, once the kids get home from school, they're, they're usually home by then. And then just your, your odds later in the afternoon tend to go up. So if, if you can, put this into your, your daily plan to, to do at some point after, th say, 3.30, 4 o'clock, um, you'll, you'll have a lot more success with this. And a lot of my agents actually incorporate this into their day, whether it's, you know, they, they focus on areas that's on their drive home. So it's a very easy thing for them to do, or they know they're going to be going to their kid's soccer practice or whatever. They they try to, to plan it along really, the way yeah. because the drop doesn't take that long at all. Um, yeah, and you, yeah. yeah, you got so to plan, so plan out your day. Like plan out the day the day before. Like know where you're going to go. Know what neighborhood you're going to go by. Um, why not? Drive, you know, find out where the expires are, the physicals are. Always always be ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, always be ready, and, and you know. In order to make sure that you do this consistently, you've got to incorporate it and plan it out. And to be perfectly blunt, you kind of have to make it easy on yourself. You know, you've got to, if you know you're going to be going a certain direction every day, find you a neighborhood, find you expired and fit those that are along the way. That way it doesn't become a task to drive the opposite way. Um, you'll, you'll probably stick with it a lot longer doing this way. And you're going to see that you have a higher rate of conversion doing things this way. So little bit of the, of the mindset there. Once you see both techniques, choose the one that's best suited for your personality or do a little bit of both, okay? Um, but you got to find figure out which one the, the, makes the most sense for you and that you're going to be willing to stick with long term. So a little bit on the law of reciprocity, and I know probably most people on the call know what that is, but it's a, it's a psychological state that refers to when somebody does something nice to you, uh, with a positive action, you're gonna you tend to reward that. You know, if if you're got a flat tire on the side of the road and somebody helps stops and helps you fix it, your natural tendency is just to make sure you get their name and number and do something nice for them to reach back out to them and thank them and you know take them out to lunch or send them a gift card or, or do something. And that's just 
a natural human reaction, and there's a lot of power in marketing and, and selling that, that goes into that. If you provide marketing, 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 and more marketing materials in advance of your meetings with sellers, then you're going to begin to build that trust and that likability that we talked about on that first slide. It's going to go way up, man. These people are going to—they're going to feel like they know you. They're going to—they're going to trust you. They're going to bond with you a lot faster than anything you've ever seen doing marketing this way. So everybody on the call, and, and this is a, we always Scotty. Is there anybody hey, really quick, Aaron? Is there anybody on the call that has used the expired listing strategy? And I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you a bunch of testimonials at the end of people from the Facebook group. Is there anybody on the call right now that is using this currently? I know there's a ton of people that want to use it. There's one. There's one lady that um, has her flower pots, but she doesn't know how to put her flowers and brochures and stuff together, which we're going to cover next week. But um, I just wanted to ask that really quick while we're talking. So go ahead, Aaron. And I'll let you. Oh, oops, I'm sorry. Just don't jump, jump ahead on you. Yeah, no problem. So, and, and for me, this is a very important slide, and I know we're covering a lot of the of mindset here up front, but I. It's just like anything else. Once you once you wrap your mind around the why, the what, and then execute, it becomes really easy. But everybody on this call, this is a safe call, and, and we're all either in the you know real estate community, either agent or loan officer or whatever. But if an expired home did not sell, and you, you survey all those folks, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, what's the answer that they that, that a consumer is going to give for why their home didn't sell? It uh, wasn't marketed. It wasn't marketed. And, to, and for us to understand that, it's worth millions and millions of dollars. There's tons of companies out there that do you know, focus groups and survey consumers and really try to get into the mindset of the consumer that they're marketing to and spend millions of dollars trying to do it because they know how, how powerful that information is. Right. When it comes to an expired or a FISBO, but especially an expired listing, the fact that we know exactly where that consumer's mindset is is right. invaluable. It's worth so much money, it's crazy. Yeah. Right? I mean, you, we know that the consumer's sitting there, and they're like, my home didn't sell because my agent was horrible. They didn't market it enough. Um, man, that that agent. And the funny thing never is, the price. It's, it's never the price. That price is not the issue, right? Yeah, never <laughs> price or condition. Right? Never From price or condition. Standpoint, right. It's always... My agent didn't market my home enough, Correct. and it's kind of funny, but it's worth its weight in gold in understanding that because the funny thing is it could be the biggest, baddest marketer in your market that, that had their home, right. right? But if it just wasn't priced right for the condition, it just they still don't move. And we see that here in Denver even. there's Homes are moving very quickly off the market out here right now, um, but we still get our fair share of expired every day. Um, just because even for our market, the price and the condition for some of these properties isn't right, and they sit there. So there's opportunity in every market. No, no matter where you're at in the country, whether you're in a really hot moving market or or one that's taking a little bit longer um, days on market, that strategy works. And, and just understanding that, that, man, I have a consumer who thinks their home didn't sell because their agent did a horrible job. Um, we're going to play right into that. We're going to say, you what? you're right, consumer, and we're going to market, market, market your home. We're going to do a better job than that last agent. Don't you worry about that. And it's, it's worth its weight in gold. And I guess the whole, the whole point by this is, like, if you address the marketing piece, you know nine times out of ten that's why it didn't – well, that, that's why they think it didn't sell. That's, that's just – that's the biggest piece that if you under just know going into it, why these expires don't didn't sell, or why the physical didn't sell? Of course, it's never price or condition. I'm joking, but um, if you just know, it's not about it's not about us as uh, as the real estate agent. It's about what are they feeling? What are their pains? Why? What are they thinking right now? And if you can address some of that in this script that we're going to give you in just a little bit, it, it, guys, it's just a slam dunk. Absolutely, yeah. So, in fact, any of the materials that you're gonna you're gonna put together. You want to completely leave price off altogether. That's a separate conversation. Um, so don't don't include price on anything that we, we show you here that you'll you'll want to build. But knowing that that's your consumer's mindset, what if in advance you prepared a marketing piece that 
had some of these elements in it, some of these things you could do for them before they sign up for you to sell their home. All right. So th again, think of my analogy of the the guy before they even before house. they even hear your voice or know you. Think about this. Now that this is where I'm I'm telling you guys, this is the biggest this is the biggest no brainer on planet Earth, and it's so powerful and so successful. If if you do this before they even know you or hear you, even on a new listing you're going to, they they know you and they know you're coming. But you need to do this stuff before your chances of getting that listing and building a relationship that's going to give you referrals from there on out is like ten times greater. Absolutely, especially on the expired. But don't don't shortchange yourself only on the expired. This strategy works on FISBOs. Um, my agents that are really doing well with this, they even do it on their own referral listings from their personal contacts. Uh, one because on occasion. They still end up in competition. You know, sometimes even on the referral, you can get you can find yourself in a spot where that referral is reaching out to one or two or more people than you. Um, so just walking into any listing appointment, any listing that you want to get, doing this strategy is, is going to do nothing but increase your conversion overall. Um, and as Scotty said, there increase the number of referrals you get from these people, and that's really kind of a sub. You know benefit of doing this, but it's huge on, on growing your business. So what if before you, you, you met these people, you prepared in advance a property website for them? Um, if your company has a, a flipbook presentation, property okay. business cards, and people say, well, what's a property business card? It's a really easy thing. You take your business card that has your face on the front and all your information, and on the back you put a very easy to make Avery label kind of, you know, just a, a, a short little Avery label that has a picture of the, the house that you're looking to, to target for a listing, and then either a QR code or some kind of link that has the, the information about the house on it. Uh, I'm telling you, I've, I've gone back into houses before and seen these. They don't throw them away. People don't throw away their house. It's crazy. Um, that business card just sits. Well, because it's not about, it's not about, the, it, I mean, it's about their home. It's like saying, you sending them a postcard with a picture of their family on it. It's just so hard to throw that away. They, yeah. they, they can't I mean, do it, which is a whole other strategy. Just, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and just on a side note too, just on your your regular listings, um, it's a great it's a great idea to do in, in no a house. No question. No question. Right? Because people are going out and they're they're looking at, at houses all day long. Man, if you're if they if you got a picture of your house that your listing and your business card on the front, right? You know your listings probably gonna get sold a little bit faster, but that, that's a whole other class. Um, also, you want to create a brochure, right? Just a, a standard brochure. Uh, create text message numbers that allow the, the property website to be downloaded to a cell phone. Uh, this one I love. Create an e-postcard that you can do for relatively little to no cost, and the seller can you send that to the seller, and this is before you meet them, uh, that they can share with their family, friends, business associates. Create a hits report. Um, for the for the consumer, which shows all the activity that you're going to be doing for them and reporting back to them on a weekly basis, and then a Facebook listing page, right? You create a Facebook page for them, and I absolutely love this strategy, uh, the Facebook page. It's the it's, craziest strategy, and it's it's there's no cost to doing it, and it has the most it has the biggest return on investment because you not only I don't know I I won't go off on a tangent, but the for all the stuff. Like next week, we're going to show you how to create every single thing except for the Facebook listing. We might even get into that a little bit, but we're going to show you how, how to create all, and, and we say 20 minutes at the end, but we're going to show you how to do that in literally a minute and a half to three minutes, the, all the other stuff. And so it's not like a, you got to spend hours and hours creating all this stuff. We're going to show you how to do it next week. Yeah, it is great. And, and yeah, I won't get too far off on the tangent either, but the Facebook page is great. I mean, Huge. if you want to talk about a way you can engage your, your, your seller, um, going on there and asking them to put post about why they moved into the house to begin with, what they loved about the house, their favorite restaurants, schools, just things that made them love the neighborhood on a Facebook page that's, that's advertising that to the new family that's going to come into that home. Uh, it's just really powerful stuff, and it's, it's really cool. So what if you did all that and you put it in a flower pot arrangement kind of like we see here? And you give that to the consumer. 
crazy. You know, and, and what, what's funny is we've been talking about the results in advance, uh, the, the results in advance for years, literally five or six years. But then Glenn Marino, think, thanks to him, uh, brought up flower pots. Like instead of giving them the flowers, the postcard, the business card stickers, um, why not throw it in something beautiful that that they, you could actually hand out or give to them that looks so, like something of value, and then you know use the scripts that we're going to give you instead of just the flyers and make something special. And so that's what people have been doing. And I got a ton of examples at the end, but it's insane how that just elevated the whole strategy to another level. Yeah, and it's I mean it's such a such an easy, effective way of doing it. You know, you, you look at something like this, uh, total cost and something like that's probably, I don't know, three bucks maybe? Three to five bucks. Some people have spent ten, um, but still, I mean, spend a hundred yeah. bucks, get ten expired, I mean, it, to get one listing, I don't, I, mean, I don't know about you, but I, I'd i write, it's about writing small checks to cash big checks, but it's more importantly building relationships, because when you hand it to them, they're, they're like, wow, thanks, you know, and it's just little stuff like that, so go ahead. Yeah, and, and some of the strategies I've you know, even heard behind this is, you know, if, if there's an, an admin in your office, obviously this is a great task for them to do for you. Um, right if you have an assistant that's doing it. Uh, if you don't, it's great to even, if you want to explore this uh, strategy with three or four agents in your market, one person goes on on shopping duty once a week, you know, that way you can kind of team up and, and knock things out. But uh, it, it's, it's really an inexpensive vehicle to deliver such a powerful piece and it, the cool thing about it too is these arrangements you go into the house and it's a gift and it has all this stuff you know sprinkled into it about their house you go back into the house two weeks later and it's almost like it's untouched I mean even if they look at it they kind of put the stuff back and it, it's just crazy how it captures their attention and it keeps you in front of them for if they're looking to list right away, they do it. And I've even um, had some agents come back and tell me that, you know, a month or two even after they've done it, they've gone back into the house and this, you know, this piece is still sitting displayed prominently, like in their in their living room, on their on their coffee table or wherever. Um, it's just kind of kind of crazy how it works out. Awesome. And there's just another there's just another example uh, that had posted by uh, Stephanie. She might even be on this call, but Stephanie just posted a really cool idea that we'll, that we'll show you after after we get to the examples. All right, so um, our six score, core skills, um, lead generation, right? Everybody's like, okay, well, great. I want to I want to do these FISBOs and expires. Um, you know, where do I go to find them? And obviously, why do you need leads? Because it's the gas that gets the car moving, right? So you got to have them. Um, no way, no way around it. Got to have leads. And so people always ask, well, do I wait for the phone to, to ring to get my leads, or do I go on the the offense and and try to get them myself? Um, go on the offense, man. Yeah. Hey, let me ask you way. this question. Let me ask you this question, Aaron. Does the offense or the defense score more points? Offense. Yeah, baby. The, that. Doesn't even matter if it's the the Seahawk defense that crushed my Broncos last year. <laughs> That's right. Um, their offense still scored more points. Yeah. So our suggestion is always buy quality leads. Okay, and this is this might be a little bit of a shock to people because they're, they're always like, well, I can you know, I can go into MLS and I can I can spend you know a few hours a day researching leads and I can find them. I don't really need to pay for them. But let's let's take a look at why. Our suggestion is that you, you go ahead and just buy quality leads. You can subscribe to a lot of services for forty to one hundred and fifteen hundred twenty dollars a month that will do all that research for you. And here's why. Here's why you want to do that. Right? If if you don't pay for them, you can you can spend all day in MLS trying to find them, uh, or you can go to the newspaper and try to circle them, but what you're going to find is that you'll spend a lot more time doing that, and it'll actually be something that's prohibitive. It'll, it may stop you from doing the strategy enough to, to get results out of it. You know, and, and by doing it that way, by going into MLS and trying to do it yourself, or circling in a newspaper, you know, how many, how many, man, how many hours are you spending doing that? 
Well, think about think about if you had somebody, even if you don't buy one of these services or use one of these services, we have no affiliation to any of this we're showing you, but if you were to spend the time making the phone calls, getting the hellos, and doing the three appointments per day while someone else is putting your list together for the rest of the week of expired FISBOs, past clients, current clients, follow-up, 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 um, you wouldn't. You'll never need another. Like you, you don't need any lead source. You will have as much as you could handle if you only focus on the phone calls and the follow up. Absolutely. So you know, one that's, that's out there that's um, pretty good, and I hear great reviews about it is the Red X. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of them out there, and, and again, like Scott said, we we don't have an affiliation with any of them, but it's just more of a from a time aspect, don't spend your time in MLS or, you know, research. Don't spend two or three hours a day researching this. Um, you know, spend spend 80 bucks and get somebody that does it for you. And, in, you know, for example, one week in Red X, you, you could get 110 FISBO leads in, in a month. It's insane, man. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, there's 33 expired listings in four days, and obviously it'll it'll vary a little bit depending on the area yeah, yeah. and what's in the market. But Correct. you know, the great thing about these that you don't get in, in MLS is you get the phone number, right? They do, for example, Red X does all the research. They scrub it against all the lists that are out there, um, and you get the phone number, which for that follow up that we spoke about is key. And, and you don't get that with MLS. Now you you could go to a different website and try to hunt down the phone number, but it's just you're not going to stick with it long term. Um, it won't be something you do every day if you're having to go through that much brain damage to find these folks. So our recommendation is to spend eighty to hundred bucks and, and get it for you. I had I, one you, lady. I had um, th this is a great t this is a great story. So I had one lady say that she was out delivering flower pots and she was going. I don't know if either fizzbos or expired. And she went to a house, and they said, no, thanks, we're not going to list again until next year, whatever. And she says, but I just talked to a friend of mine down the road, and they, um, they're they thinking about listing. Why don't you, and I'll just call her and let her know you're on your way. So, like, she got a lead from a lead that was an expired, that no longer is going to sell, that referred her to one of their neighbors. Because, guys, neighbors talk, face it, right? I mean, when, how, when a home goes for sale, who goes, to, who goes to the first open house? All the neighbors. They want to see what's inside the house, how does it look, what's it listed for. They're just nosy. So what a great way to build relationships. Yeah, absolutely. That's, in order to find these folks, right, spend just a little bit of money. That way you can focus on those money-making activities of meeting with people and negotiating contracts. So just a little bit of math because I'm a, I'm a finance guy, so I won't, I won't bore you too much with this. But, you know, if Red X gets you 200 leads a month and you're spending 89 bucks for that, you're signing up for just a little over $1,000 a year for – 2,000 leads that have that are, are great leads and have the phone number in there so you can follow up with them. Um, you know, one $200,000 listing yields 6000 in commission. It, it's a no-brainer. It's a small check to write a big check. Uh, and then just a couple other stats in here that you want to remember is that half of your FISBOs are going to list in four to six weeks, right? And that makes all the sense in the world. Maybe you've heard that before. Um, it, they have to go about it themselves for a little while and get beat up and go through all the brain damage of trying to do it themselves. Uh, and then they're ripe and ready for for you to step in and say, hey, you know, would you like some professional help in doing this? It doesn't, doesn't look like it's going too well for you. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? So once you once you drop off those FISBOs initially, they're going to be ready four to six weeks later, so that follow-up is key. Um, so dropping three of these off a day, right, in 30 to 60 days, you're going to be very, very busy. Busy is good. Bu busy doing the right money-making activity is good. Don't fool yep. yourself on that, though. D don't fool yourself thinking looking up leads is busy because it's not. Having somebody do that for you is smart while you're on the phone calling past clients, current clients, talking to your current clients that you currently have listed or current buyers. That, I mean, guys, there's never enough communication to follow up with those people. And somebody asked the question, when do I, so if once I drop my flower pot off, when, when when's the best time to follow up? I would follow up every single day just to check in. I don't think it's over aggressive. And they're going to tell you how they feel. Don't, don't make it just a, hey, you know, don't make it a beat up, give me the listing type call. Just say, you know, like call today and say, hey, how was your weekend? Just checking in, see how things are going, what your thought process is. I mean, 
because so, I guarantee someone else is beating down that door. Yeah, and we know from the beginning that they're getting they're getting mail pieces, they're getting calls. You know, folks that are taking a different approach. They're, all the fish, you know, swimming in that bowl that we we showed you um, initially, right? They're getting all that every day. So yeah, absolutely, especially on an expired those. Those people want to sell their home, um, right? They didn't list it just because they want to have a bunch of strangers come in their house. They they want to list that home, so it's probably going to go back on the market relatively quickly. So especially on an expired, that I, yeah, you know that daily follow up is going to be key. So just again, real quick, you're just kind of a review, just so you know everybody's on the call is have got a game plan. Fifty to sixty percent of your fizzbos are never going to answer the phone, so you want to target. 60 to 90 of those a week, block off four to six hours in your calendar where you're doing nothing but calling these folks. That's going to yield you 30 phone calls, 30 conversations on the phone, and you're just looking to get five of them to say, yes, come meet me, right, you know, type thing. Uh, only reason you're calling is to get a face-to-face -face appointment, and uh, any selling that you do is going to be in person. That's key. And then, again, follow-up, follow-up. Uh, don't take it personally. Obviously, it's just a numbers game. So, you know, the more activity you, you have, um, the more success you're going to have. You know, that's a, you pick up a good point on the don't take it personally, because I think we all, like, want success, but we go, man, I called the first three people I called, or the first three flower pots I handed out, or the first ten flower pots I handed out, um, no success. And like the number of, for me, it's like it, it, you got to make it like a game. Like you got to go, all right, another no, another no, another no. I'm one closer to a yes. Not, oh my God, this doesn't work. It, this isn't working. It's not for me. It, it's not. It's not that. It's just you haven't talked to the right person yet, or built the, you know, found the right person that's looking to. You haven't. You you you, you haven't created a, a a solution for one person that you've talked to yet. And, and it's just a numbers game. It's just a matter of time because everybody that does this that I know of consistently does this, has success with it. Absolutely. And, I'm, and I know that, you know, we got a lot of folks on the call here today, Scott, and those that, that, that hear the idea, I'm going to guess almost all of us love it because we see the power in it. We know, we know it's going to work, right? Right. And the difference between the, the top teams in your area that you maybe look up to or you, you're working towards in your business Right. Um, the only difference between them and you right now is really just having systems and consistency in place. Because right. um, I meet with them. I mean, there's tons of, of great, personable people that make all kinds of different income out there. And, and what you find is the difference between them are, are just systems and consistency in, in their work plan. And so put this into place. You know, when you walk away today, get committed to it that you're going to do it for 60 to 90 days. Um, and do it consistently, and we haven't seen anybody that does it consistently that, that failed yet. But you know, don't give up after the first, second, even the third phone call. Um, and the reason why is because you're going to run into two people. I'll, I'll just, I'll save you the the suspense now, right? You're gonna, there's gonna be a, a, a nice person, or there's gonna be a mean person. And don't take it personally either way. It's great when you run into the nice ones. Um, just brush off the mean ones and, and move on and make another phone call or drop off another flower pot so you find that nice person. Uh, and it, you know, I think in, in sales, that's just a well, it's just a, a mindset that you have to have is just you know these negative, mean people. I'm just going to brush them off as fast as they came to me, and I'm going to move on because I'll, I'll find cool and, and fun people to work with. Uh, but I'll take my chances and I'll run into more nice people than mean. So there's a couple of FISBO scripts in here that uh, we'll run through here quickly. You know, the first one is when you call an agent uh, or you call a FISBO, I'm sorry, and they say that, yes, we are cooperating with realtors. So very simple. You call and say, hello, may I please speak with the owner for the home uh, that's uh, for sale at 123 State Street. FISBO says, yep, this is him. You say, I understand that you're selling for sale by owner and I'm not trying to interfere with that. I was just wondering, are you cooperating with real estate agents? FISBO says, yes, we are. Bring me a buyer, and I'll get you a 3% commission. You say, okay, that sounds great. Do you mind telling me a little bit about your home? Okay, and me, my personal background is I have a lot of um, experience closing 
internet based leads warm to cold calling. And the number one thing that I always use and I always taught my team to use is if you can get the client talking about their house, you're more than halfway there as far as a victory goes. Right. Um, because everybody wants to talk about the house, the upgrades they've done to it, what they like about it, what they don't like about it, right? And as a and as a a selling person, it's great because you can sit back and learn a lot about them, and you're kind of like a little sniper. You, you know, they tell you about the hardwood floors, you say, "Oh, is that cherry or oak?" Right? Just a quick little question to kind of keep them going, and you can turn this into literally a ten to twenty minute phone call which is great because they're going to be talking and the more they talk the better off you're going to be because they're going to, they're going to feel like they know and trust you more with um, the amount of talking that they're doing. So once they get done with all that, you say, hey, that sounds really nice, great home. Is there a time I can come by and take a look at the property? Okay, because again, you're just looking to get eyeball to eyeball with these folks. That's your whole, it's your whole goal. So that's your first. The only with, the only change I would make there, the, the, um, and this is just me spending time with um, marketing minds, and we we've we've literally vetted these. Like, is there a time I would change what time works best? Because okay. they can say no. You, you know what I mean? That's the only thing. And like, we did this back in January, and like, and we literally go through this over and over and over again. And we I talk with people, and hey, did this work? Did that work? So like, if you're a couple, of, I mean, that, that's that's just one. So instead of a, like ask. For when say what time works best, Wednesday or Thursday morning or afternoon. Yeah, that's great actually. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna update these for sure. Yeah, uh, and yeah. that's just me learning. That's just me learning. You know, and like like because it's, it's easy to say no. Nah, you know, it's probably not gonna work. If you say what time, they got they got to either give you a time or go. Uh, you know what? It's probably not gonna work. You know what I mean? So it's just harder to say no to a time than it is like what time works best. Um, it's like, yeah, kind of like when you're that. asking for like 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 it's, instead of saying who do you know that I can help, say who did you talk to last, you know? Or who do you know job. that's I mean it's, so it's just it's just changing it up a little bit. Yeah, um, that's huge. Great tip. All right, so the Fizbo script two is going to be the uh, the agent that is not cooperating. They're trying to save some money. So same open same second line, right? And, and the key to this is, in that second line is, I'm not trying to interfere with that. It kind of breaks down that wall initially, right? Because when you call them, their initial thought is, all right, here's another agent calling me. They want to interfere with, uh, with me selling my house by myself. So you just kind of tear down that wall right out of the gate and say, nope, not, I'm not looking to interfere with that. Even though you might end up interfering with it later once they get to, to know you and trust you and like you, they may decide they want to use you. But initially, you just need to let them know that you're not looking to interfere with that. Um, third, third uh, line here is where it kind of gets mixed up a little bit. Are you selling it yourself because you don't like realtors, or you're just trying to save money? And they say, no, we have nothing against realtors. We're just trying to save a little bit of money. I appreciate your honesty. Do you mind telling me a little bit about your home? Right, just right again back to to getting them talking about their house again, and then. Uh, after they know that, you say, okay, that's great. Perhaps if I knew a little bit more about your house, I'd have it top of mind when I meet some, with some of my buyers. Uh, I'm, I may have your home top of mind that's best suited for them. Okay, great. You know, and, and off they go again. That sounds really nice. I have time on my schedule Tuesday morning or Wednesday afternoon. Which is the best for you? There you go. Right. Um, great stuff. Script number three. We're not cooperating with realtors. In fact, we don't even like them. We've all heard of this person, right? Same opening line, same breaking down the wall that you're not looking to interfere with that, right? But this time the Cisco says, nope, we're selling it ourselves. And, and honestly, I, I don't really need an agent. Um, and I don't even really like them, right? You're like, wow, okay. I appreciate your honesty, but if you don't like realtors, I bet it's because you had a bad experience. Right, and you can almost put down your phone and put it on mute for four or five minutes um, because <laughs> here comes the horror story, right? It, it, you may have heard it a thousand times before, but you you just broke down that wall, and they're going to tell you the reason why they don't like dealing with realtors, and invariably it's because they ran into somebody that's not a professional like you. And then you just come right back um, to them after they're done with, with their little experience and say, okay, 
I understand that, but have you ever had a bad experience eating out in a restaurant? Man, I know I have, but it doesn't stop me from eating out. I just go to a different restaurant. Now, can you tell me a little bit about your house, right? Just kind of redirecting them again back to getting them to, to talk about their house. And then, you know, again, I, I got some time Wednesday morning or Thursday afternoon. Which one works best for you? You're just trying to get in front of them. And then last but not least, you've got the, uh, the occasional person that asks what cooperating means. Same intro, same thing here, but this time they say, what does cooperating mean? It means if, if I could help produce a contract on your home, would you be willing to work with me? His boss says, yeah, but I'm not listing my house with you. You say, no, no, that's fine. Just tell me a little bit about the house so I know, so I know a little bit more about it. Um, and hopefully that leads into a 10-minute conversation there with them doing most of the talking. And then, again, sounds really nice. I got time Wednesday morning, Thursday afternoon. Which one works best for you? So um, those scripts will help, help you break down some walls there. Um, you know, for the, the sake of time here on the, on the, on the call, Scotty, I'm going to skip through these today. Okay. We'll come back and, and do the objections okay. later. Okay. But uh, a Notre Dame study shows that 44% of salespeople quit the first time they hear no. 22% are out after the second time. 14 are done on the third. 12% are done on the fourth. 92% of us are out. Um, one through four no's. 92% of us. Yet 60% of sales close after the prospect says no at least 40 times. Four times. Yeah, and here's the thing about the expired or FISBO. I mean, either they're going to sell or not now or later. It doesn't matter. That's really your goal to find that out. But it's also a goal. It, for me, I, I, I kind of remove the – I like to – no matter who I'm working with or who I'm trying to get with or whatever, I always remove the wall of, hey, it's not about, really for me, it's not about selling your home. It's about helping you with whatever you need help with. So maybe it, maybe it's going to come down to selling your home, and maybe it's maybe, you know, I want to interview you as bad as you want to interview me, and I want to make sure that I can truly help you. And if I can't help you, I'm going to tell you right up front. Um, so really, I just more or less want to get to know you because maybe down the road I can help you with something else or you can help me with something else. So me, for me, it's about building relationships with people I know, like, and trust. Yeah, absolutely. That that always removes the wall of, okay, he's not going to try and tell me. And I never try to really sell. I try to get to know the person, like really, truly get to know the person, find out what their short-term, long-term goals is. If you had to wake up tomorrow, what would be your best? Like if you had to wake up tomorrow and go, here's the exact thing that I want to happen. What is that? Great. Okay. Um, you know, and maybe I don't even, you know, maybe I don't even want to list your home. Maybe it's not the type of home that I that I specialize in. What do you mean specialize in? See, I mean, there's just different ways you can go with this. But this right here, this is, and this plays on people's like inner emotions because when you get told no, you're like, man, that doesn't work, and you stop doing it, right? I'm telling you, you got to go for once you get a yes, you're like, okay, cool, it works. You you have to build the confidence. Confidence is everything in this business. But you have to know these numbers to, to, to have success. If you go to one, two, three, or four, you're not going to make it. If you go to five, your success is going to go through the roof. You, just, you have to keep going. Yeah, and, and I think you know, half the key, like you said, the confidence is even, even if you get the no, as long as you have the mindset and you know, you know like you said, I'm, well, I'm one more no closer to the yes, as long as you know that, man, on average, they're going to say no four times before they say yes, then it doesn't really play on your psyche that hard, or, or it plays on it less, right? Because you know it's just part of the plan that you're working. And part of the plan is, is, is the no's got to be in there to get the yeses. Yep. Um, and, and why is that? Man, because rebounding wins championships, whether it's we the – yeah. Amen, man. I love that. That was great. By, yeah, that was great. Whether it's the Stanley Cup finals or back when Bron Bron was playing for Miami. Um, Dennis Rodman. Yeah, Dennis Rodman, back on the spring, yeah. right? Um, rebounding wins championships. So just keep throwing it at the net. Keep making those phone calls. Keep keep at it. Um, and don't give up on this strategy or any other strategy, really, that you're implementing until you give it enough of okay. your effort to get the no's. And, you know, I would say at least 60 to 90 days with any strategy, you got to give it time to work itself out. Right. Um, yeah, because that, that first shot rarely goes in. Cool. So um, let me go. Let me just show you guys a couple of things we're going to be sharing with you next week. So next week we're going to be um, Aaron. You're pretty much that. That was pretty much it, right? Yep. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So um, we got a couple minutes here. We'll we'll take some questions. 
So let me just go down here. That's just a recap. So what? Here, let me just go like this here and start with. Uh, all right. So these are just a couple things that we are going to cover. Just I want to show you guys some examples. This is really cool. So whoops, I didn't want to do that. That was a big mess up. All right, let me go back to 54 again. So here's some things that people have put up there that I really appreciate you guys sharing. These are just a couple ideas. So this one, my variation of the flower pot. Instead of flowers, because I couldn't find any nice looking real flowers, I didn't want to uh, uh, want to do fake. I did a candle, I garnished it with what, what my husband called a rock bed uh, um, opinion. So I just I, I don't think it matters. It, I mean, this looks really cool. and. It gets you the appointment. It gets you the face-to-face. -face. And here's the script. Here's the script. And guys, this is the best script on planet Earth. Glenn, come, I don't know if Glenn come up with this or who come up with it, but here's the script. You knock on the door. You, you, they open the door and they say, "Hey, hey, I'm really sorry that your home expired. Um, if you ever decide to market your home again, I would love to interview for the position. Please accept this free gift." is my way of saying here's something that I've done for you that I think you'll like if you ever decide to sell your, you know, to market your home again. So, sorry that your home expired. I would love to interview for the position to market your home. Please accept this free gift of a couple things that I've done for you in advance of, 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 of meeting you. And it's flyers of their home, postcards, which we're going to show you next week, uh, e-postcard, e really, really cool stuff. Here's another one. Beautiful orange uh, flower because she did a couple of them there. Here's that. Uh, received my first call back. This is back in April. We started this in January, so a short time after Jocelyn did it. Um, super excited. Here's another one. Just gone up with the listing from this morning. They canceled the other appointment they had with another agent, and I'm signing contracts tomorrow. So pumped. Jamie, thanks for that. Here's uh, I think this one was a $10 deal, glass vase. I think these are fake. Um, he did this for a, a presentation, but I thought, man, that's really cool. Way to go about it. it has really cool. Uh, I don't know. Probably get this stuff at the dollar store. These little like pearl rocks at the at, at the bottom of it. Um, so I decided to give the expired listing a shot. I tweaked the process a little for what I thought would work for me. I sent a packet out. Blah blah blah. It says so far I've signed up one listing at 224. Average for our market is three 132. And I want to I want to stop here for a second. Whatever your average loan size is, this is the perfect strategy to up that loan size because the higher the loan size. The more money you make, the higher the percentage, right? I had an appointment today, and he indicated the reason he chose me was from the stack of eight letters he received was that I sent a handwritten note that I was specific about uh, to, to his home. I have, I've been asked back tomorrow to hopefully sign contracts. Listing is worth 510. I have an appointment later this week for a 299 home on golf course. I haven't even been door to door yet. This is her sending them out um, without even going door to door. Awesome, Jamie, on that one. Here's another one, kind of a blurry picture. Sorry, it's, uh, my summertime flower pot, sunblock, water, bug repellent wipes, and hand sanitizer. How cool is that? So it's not even flowers; it's just stuff to use for the summer. So like, get creative on this stuff, and that's all stuff you can buy at the dollar store. It, it's a, it's really the law of reciprocity, and it makes it about their home is what the key is here. The mindset. Okay, we're going to show you that next week too. Here's some more really cool. Uh, um, Let's see. I started the flower pot strategy this week. First day out, we had five pots delivered. Two of the five told us they were seriously entertaining the idea of relisting their homes and promised to call us when they do. They were very well received, and we are excited to make this a regular part of our marketing. Very, very good looking. Here's the one that Eddie did. Here's the guy. I just took this. So he's at 3.2 million when we first started this in January. Using this strategy, he's uh, listed and sold 3.2. I don't know. About, I don't know about sold. I'm sure he's got referrals and stuff like that, but. 3.2 million just with the flower pot strategy. Okay, so add that to your uh, our July flower pot. She did a really cool red, white, blue one. Love that. Thank you, Linda, for sharing that on the page. Uh, Liz, my Fourth of July themed flower pot. So she had another Fourth of July deal folder. It was really cool. Um, idea for a flower pot program. You have old china packed away in boxes. So really cool idea there. Thank you, Debbie, for sharing that. Uh, here's uh, Camelia. Thanks for Mr. Carter. I delivered my first three flower pots, anticipating great results. Very cool. Um, here's some really cool other flower pots. And so I'm just showing you people. My first two flower pots were spur of the moment hanging baskets. I think positive. Diane, thank you for sharing. Uh, there's that. Here's another. Hey guys, remember the flower pot I took to a listing presentation last month? Well, the owner just called me to say they are ready to list the house with me. So one month, Sylvia. Thank you, Sylvana. Thanks for sharing that. Um, here's some. Uh, 
Jody shared little card holder things that she got, flower picks. There's 50 clear coil cords holders for tw um, like $13, $14 for 50 of them. So really professionally done, nice, cool, hard. It'll hold the flyers, the postcards, the business cards, all kinds of stuff. Looks like they're on eBay. There's, and you guys can get a copy of this, this PowerPoint as well. Um, here's some other pictures. That, another spin of the flower pot idea. There are uh, May Day flowers for my top 25 past clients, which we delivered yesterday. Sticker on pot, by the way. I am never too busy for you and your referrals. Great, great, great idea. And this is going to past clients. What an amazing way to help them remember who you are and what you do for a living. Uh, I love this. She just put sold right on there. Janice, okay, I have decided to work on the flower pots, and I just wanted something that would really stand out, so I started with the pot. I just finished my first pot, and with like opinions 100% complete, I will update. So I just I just took a punch. Uh, well, I finally faithfully using the flower pot strategy for the past three weeks, and tonight I listed a home with spectacular ocean and mountain views. Thank you, Agent Mastermind and Kimberly Buttle. You're awesome. So the stuff is no joke. I just want to show you one that was just put up here um, by a good friend of ours on the Agent Mastermind group. If you're not part of it, check this out. So this one she just posted um, not too long ago. Where is it at? Right here. Stephanie, one hour ago. This is my first marketing package. <clears throat> it's a spinoff of the flower pot for a potential listing and repurchase. The couple came through an open house I was hosting this past weekend and talked about possibly listing their home and buying another one in the next town over. So I made a marketing package to try and get a listing appointment. It contains a large yummy uh, fragrant candle with my label on it, a snazzy prospective flyer of their home with all the specs and photos from last time it was listed, blah, blah, blah. So how cool was that? It doesn't have to be. It's, it's all about you giving something of value, showing them that you care, results in advance, doing the marketing that you would do on their home up front before you even talk to them. She just took it off the old listing. So brilliant, Stephanie. I hope that works out for you. I would love to see um, how that turns out. So yeah, yeah this stuff is real. So next it's week, it's go ahead, buddy. Great stuff, man. Well, I would say it's just great stuff because, it, again, it plays into that the consumer's mindset. They want to sell their house. They didn't do it because they didn't Absolutely. think the last person marketed it the Absolutely. right way. You're there. You're doing something right. different. You're showing them right. that you're a stud. You're going to market their house. Right. It's an easy thing for, for us as salespeople to do. I mean, you show up and you knock the door. It, it's yep. Your confidence goes through the roof. There, it's, no question. You're a person delivering flowers. I mean, it's so easy. Um, right. And you just get out there and do it and implement it. You'll, you'll see results. Absolutely. So to get a copy of this PowerPoint, contact the loan professional they sent you here. Um, if for some reason you don't have a sponsor and you're just getting on the class every week, just send a, um, uh, an email to ammInvite at gmail.com, and we'll get you hooked up with, uh, with the sponsor in your area. Um, Karen, any questions that you see that came through that, that I might be able to answer now? I know next week we're going to be covering a lot, too, but I thought I would see if there's any questions that we didn't cover or – what do you say the second time around? So, the, so somebody says, what do you say the second time around? The first time, what you want to do is give them the flower pot, use the script. Hey, sir, your home expired. Would love to interview for the position. Here's a free gift, um, something I've created for you to help you to sh kind of share with you what I do for my clients, which is all about their home. And then what I would do is just follow up with them. Either we're going to we're gonna cover next week a drip campaign that you can use that I think will be really beneficial for you to drip little bitty things about marketing to their home, not about you, but different things like the text code, the QR code, the flyers, like maybe just send them handwritten, hey, just wanted to remind you of the flyers that I create with the QR code and text code. Hey, I you know, really would like a chance to interview for the position. <clears throat> Here's a, uh, an example of uh, the uh, weekly update that I'm going to give you uh, where, the, where the hits are coming from, and like Zillow and Trulia, stuff so like that. So there's different things. We're going to create a drip campaign for you that you can use that I think will be really, really cool. So after you drop it off, you can send them stuff, um, of course, to get in front of them or stay in front of them. So, all right? All right. Hey, buddy, uh, Aaron, I, I sincerely appreciate you. Um, going above and beyond Call of Duty and getting the CE approved so agents can actually take advantage of this in Colorado, and we're going to do it in a, hopefully every single state will get this thing approved, which I think is so cool. We're working on a couple other classes. We're working on the uh, phone burner class. <clears throat> we're working on the uh, Farming Your Database custom Facebook audience with Facebook. I think it's going to be awesome, and then Virtual Freedom I think would be another awesome CE class that, that everybody could benefit from. So 
working on that all the time. If you guys have any suggestions, please go to our Facebook page at agentmastermind.com forward slash groups forward slash agentmastermind. And Aaron, again, thank you so much. Appreciate you, brother. I know you're doing some other things. We'll keep a secret, and um, we'll go from there. So I appreciate you more than you'll ever know for doing that. And uh, I, hope, I hope you guys take this, implement it, incorporate it into your lives. And um, I know it works because I've seen tons of success with it. And uh, it's just getting in front of people, building relationships, and then following up with those relationships. All right? Aaron, any final words? Thanks, Scott. No, I appreciate uh, it. Appreciate being on the phone call. It was lots of fun. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much, brother. All right, guys. See you same, same time, same place next week. Uh, have a great rest of the week. Have a safe rest of the week. And we'll see you on the web. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.